months, months ago, a friend of mine and I, we were in the shed, we were in the shop, and we were having a conversation, something along the lines of like, isn't it the worst having like one cool part that's just kind of like sitting, waiting for something that your mind has to build an entire bike around just to use? I can't think of any agreement more relatable to the subject of this video than that. Now, I think the interesting thing in this case is that desirable piece, um, I didn't actually have it. It was just an idea in my head. And I was like, I am going to continue to acquire parts so that when the modern day one and one eighth threadless bull moose bar comes up as available through any of the avenues that you can actually get it through, I'm gonna get a set and then I'll just be able to put it all together. And that, well, that's what we're about to do. They're up here. They've been here for almost a week and I don't know how I haven't told you about it. So these are the Blue Lug Neato made uh, bull moose handlebars. And if you ask me, the perfect modern touched old school steel handlebar. These ones, they're gonna go on the Trek 8500, the Just Us build. And uh, to do so, we also have to change out a couple of other things. So, a new Kona Project 2 cantilever suspension corrected all steel fork. And then, of course, uh, a headset to match. This is just an FSA Orbit. Um, oh my gosh, I almost forgot to take it before. Also, quick disclaimer, before we even get started, no, I'm not going to cut it and slam it right away. I promise. Well, I might, I might slam it. This is the part where you uh, you put all the parts on and look at what you've created silhouette-wise and make sure you're happy with it. If ever you forgot that this is definitely happening at someone's house in their shed, um, this should reinforce it. Admittedly, throwing a suspension corrected fork on this thing took a little bit of getting used to the look of because it's just like completely different than uh, any style that I've really built before. You know, I've definitely got my formula that I follow where it's like everything needs to be slammed, tucked, super tight clearances, just like street machines. Think of like my Corrado, the slammed Corrado on Porsche Gaudis versus like someone who's building an old Bronco. Like, we're just not gonna do the same thing. This is a Bronco, and this is sweet. If 
If it seems like I'm using the drone a lot more in the vlogs, it's because I am. So a couple of things, it rides totally awesome. The brakes, they actually work pretty good. However, I have them like very, very towed in because they're super noisy, but they work great. Um, I am easily the worst person at trying to do like wheelies and stuff. Uh, this bike, this build, it actually makes it seem like I kind of know what I'm doing. I still don't, but like, you know, when you're looking for all the help you can get, this would be it. Let's go play with it. Dan, Dan, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the thing happened like through this little, this little berm corner. Oh man, I'm just, I'm so just adequate at bikes. Someone had said something about the gear ratio on this and like it being like too easy and you should have gone with a bigger chain ring. I don't know. I think the uh, the 3051 is a really nice ratio, even with the 26 inch wheels. Because coming up stuff like this, which I reckon looks flat from up here with this GoPro camera shooting it, uh, feels well flat like it looks in this video because of the bikes all the way down there because of that 3051 gear ratio. And I'll show you, I'll show you from up here and it won't be impressive. But you just have to understand, riding over big rocks, as Russ would call them, baby heads, I hate that. Uh, you know, it's nice to have some like small gearing that just, you spin. Even when you get knocked off course, the easy gearing, you just stay on the pedals and keep coming up. Did that shot look okay? And for fun, I think we should also do this climb. I'm telling you, it's a wheelie machine. I can't do that on any other bike, but this one, I can actually like control the brake and find the balance point. I mean, if that was the only thing about it, it would already be perfect, but look at this, look at that. today, the riding and all that good stuff, that puts this thing, the uh, the Just Us Trek 8500 build, at a point in builds lives that are kind of, for no real rhyme or reason, my absolute favorite stage of projects. It's like the 75 or 85 percent complete mark, where like definitely, you know, the shape is there, we know what we're gonna you know, feasibly, expectation-wise, end up with, but we've got uh, the little details, like whether or not we're gonna do colored wheels or not, or what tires are gonna go on it, uh, what grips we're, are we gonna go silicone grips, or are we gonna go the cool Vans Cult grip? Uh, they're like the fun little, like, pick away at things that uh, are honestly, like, expensive to all do at once, not so overly important that you need to rush them. You can just kind of like take your time. You've got a, a usable product now. It looks cool. It works good. Anyway, before signing off, I've been finishing the videos with a uh, Patreon supporters list. Thank you. Um, if you want to get involved in that, like today while I was riding this bike, I was like posting pictures 
and putting them on Patreon. Everybody who supports the channel on Patreon saw the behind the scenes of this bike getting built, getting ridden, talked about, and we make comments. All the behind the scenes stuff happens there. So if you want to be able to see it and have your name, if I don't forget to put it, in the, the list of thank yous. And if that doesn't tickle your fancy, or at the same time, you wanna check out the sponsor of this build, Just Us Coffee Roasters, they're linked below as well. All right. <laughs>